How do you get how do you get all of the images into Loeb? Yeah, so um, there's a couple different ways. So this is my um, extremely famous and extremely fabulous cheese data set, which I've done. Um, I've used for at least five years for demos. <laughs> it's it's very cheesy. It's extremely cheesy, and it's, and it's just. Uh, it's beautiful. I love it. Um, so it turns out there are six different kinds of cheese. Um, I did my research. So there's bloomy, which has that kind of external mold, that delicious mold. Um, blue, uh, fresh cheese, which is like burrata or mozzarella. Hard mm -hmm. cheese, like, um, let me see if I can scroll down for any hard cheese, like... Uh, like a Parmesan? Yeah, something you could grate. Okay. Um, so great cheese is what you're saying. Great cheese, yes. Semi soft cheese. It's going to be nothing but dad jokes from here on out. So. Okay, great, awesome. Well, I'm down. <laughs> <laughs> Semi soft cheese is can be also confused with bloomy a little bit. It's like the camembert, mm -hmm. and then washed rind. So washed rind is um, there's a special way of preparing it. It's like they they wash it in a, a brine. Mm. Yeah, it's, that, those are the stinky, stinky cheeses that okay. talks about. But to answer your question, so what I did, I did this in two ways. So you can see these images are quite different. And I was sneaky, and I went on to Firefox, I believe, and there is a way to export. There's also some browser extensions you can use just to, to, to like search for cheese images, and then you can scrape the entire, um, the entire. Uh, image data set and just download it all um, offline onto your local. So that's one way to do it. There's some browser extensions that can help you with that stuff. But I think I got at least a thousand images, if not more, from that technique. Okay. But this one is um, I actually took a, a, a video on my iPhone. You can see I have a plate. So this is done in my kitchen a long time ago. Uh, and, and I used... Um, Oh man, I used a little utility in JavaScript to break up the images from those files. I have this documented somewhere, but I did this manually. So all of this work, the point of this discussion is that all of this work, Loeb, you know, prevents you from having to do um, because you don't have to go and manually break up the frames out of your video. Fun fact, some of these um, videos, I did go to my local cheese shop, Wazix, and I did, I, I just like scanned this, the cheese and, the, and I'm like, I work for Microsoft and I'm working on a machine learning model and I need to, I need to video your cheese. And the guy was like, okay, honey, you know, whatever. Um, but the import here, so here's where you would import that. You'd import images from your camera. That would be that scrape um, or a structured folder of images. That's when you have this big data set of busted up images or, and this is the really nice thing. You can use your camera, and um, I could take something like this, cheese, <laughs> cheese, cheese, <laughs> and start taping. And it would go down, and down, and down, and down, and down, and a whole bunch of, actually, this camera. Uh, oh, I would hold it down, sorry. Yeah, hold it down. And that took a whole bunch. So now I have 22 unlabeled uh, cheeses. And, and I, it was just it, it was it was just taking the the pictures and you were just like rotating. Yeah, yeah. So it's like a quick snap. Yeah. Okay. So this is cool. a quick snap. It's a quick snap. Yeah. You just hold it down. So I would go and label this as um, this is blue cheese. So I could actually um, I think I could select all of these and label them as blue There we go. Now they're all labeled and I have more blue cheesies. So. That's that. And that is great because um, you can, what I've done also is I um, attached different cameras. So this just came from my, um, my own camera, but you could have a little external camera and then you could, th this is what I did for my lace making data set. You can just like go to your collection of lace and really do a good, you know, image capture nice and close. Cause some of, for, for lace making, um, you know, stop training. For lace making, which I'll show you here, so I have this collection of um, antique lace. These are all framed up and on my wall. So I had to kind of like take them off the wall and get a camera and like finagle it over to take pictures. So, and it needs to be quite detailed because, you know, this is complicated stuff. <laughs> but it wound up making quite a decent model, actually. So there's a thousand images of my lace collection. 
And um, so this is Coraline lace. And so the idea was if I was in a museum and I needed to catalog my, my, um, um, some of my collection, then I could take some images and then it would help me categorize some of my other you know, images that, that I might not need to do manually. So um, image collection and um, categorization in museums is a huge amount of labor and cost. So these kind of processes using machine learning can actually help with that stuff. And that's really, really cool. I was talking to a museum of perfume bottles, which is cool. And I would have never guessed that there's a museum of perfume bottles. Yeah, they're amazing. And I showed them this and they're like, oh my gosh, you know, they, what they needed to do is isolate each perfume bottle um, and then just, you know, walk around and then categorize them. These are from Avon and these are from um, Chanel and these are from Gucci or whatever, you know, and then they could figure out, you know, maybe they could get more granular. This is the 1997 bottle. This is the 2005. So um, really a lot. And then, you know, the next time they get something added to the collection, they can just run it through the machine learning model and be catalog catalogued and categorized.